Resistance is Futile by Visual Pony What could it be, big sister? I have never seen anything like it. Princess Luna asked her sister without taking her eyes off of the strange object that had appeared in her night sky. I have no idea, Luna. Are you sure you didn't put it there? Celestia responded doubtfully. She didn't know what else to say. If I had put a green and black sphere right next to my moon, I think I would remember it, Celestia. This made Celestia think. She had no reason not to believe her little sister if she said that she had not put that sphere into the night sky. But if it hadn't been Luna, who else would have the power to manipulate the sky like this? Say, sister, do you think it might be dangerous? The younger Alicorn asked timidly. I don't know. All I do know is that we have to investigate it. This object could very well mean that some pony is trying to interfere with our rule. Luna nodded and looked up at her older sister who seemed to glow in the pale light of her moon. She had been frightened when she had risen the moon just about an hour ago and found this strange object floating right next to it. The princess of the night had tried to move her moon around the sky to see if that object was following it, and indeed it was. What do you suggest we do, big sister? We can't fly that high and the teleportation is out of the question as well. We would have to combine our powers for such a long journey and only one pony would be able to go even if we do. The midnight blue alicorn stated slowly but surely starting to doubt the feasibility of their plan to investigate the object. We don't need to go. We can send Twilight Sparkle. I trust her and if there's any danger up there I am sure she will be able to defend herself. Celestia stated proudly. But what if she doesn't want to go? Have you ever seen Twilight say no to me? Besides, I can sense nothing threatening from that object. I'm sure she will be fine. Celestia chuckled. A few hours later, after sunrise. My dear and most faithful student, Twilight Sparkle, no doubt did you notice a new addition to the night sky while you were stargazing like every Tuesday night. I can guess that you have already formed many theories about what the sphere might be and why my sister has placed it so close to her moon. I have to disappoint you, however. This sphere was not placed there by my dear sister, Princess Luna. It appeared out of nowhere and we need your help to investigate if it is a threat or not. Please come to Canterlot as soon as you can. I will fill you in on the details when we meet. Princess Celestia of Equestria P.S. Please come alone and don't tell your friends. We wouldn't want to scare any pony for nothing. Twilight read the letter over and over again. A green sphere in the night sky? Now she cursed herself for listening to Pinkie Pie and skipping her stargazing last night in favor of a party to celebrate the latest victory of Rainbow Dash's favorite hoofball team. So what does the letter say, Twilight? An anxious-looking Spike asked her. He had watched her for almost an hour now, and she had not said a single thing while her expression grew darker and darker. I'm sorry, Spike, but I can't tell you. The princess says that it might be nothing at all, so I shouldn't tell any pony. However, she wants me to come to Canterlot as fast as possible. Hmm, I don't like that sudden secrecy, Twilight. So far you have told your friends everything, even about that one time you and Moondancer... Not another word, Spike. I thought we had agreed that we would never speak of that again. How many times do I have to tell you that it was just for research? The Lavender Unicorn snapped. I don't know. Maybe if you hadn't lain on the ground with him on your back, I might believe you. The little dragon snickered. Twilight face hoofed. The photographic memory of her assistant came in handy most of the time, but could be quite a bother when it came to the more embarrassing aspects of her past. Besides, there was no time to lose. Princess Celestia wouldn't have sent her this letter if it wasn't urgent. Ignoring Spike for the meantime, Twilight began to pack some necessities. A few books in astrology, her toothbrush, and other things found their place in her saddlebags before she made her way to the front door. Good thing you are having fun, Spike. If any pony asks where I am, tell them I am in Canterlot on royal business. She called back over her shoulder to her number one assistant who was throwing a full-out laughing fit. 
half an hour later on the train to Canterlot. Twilight was skimming through some of the books she had brought with her, but was unable to find anything about strange objects in the sky. All of the mentioning of new objects in the night sky were said to be either Princess Celestia's or Princess Luna's doing. Cantalot Castle, the same evening. I am glad you could come on such short notice, Twilight, Celestia said after greeting her student with an embrace. You let us sound a pretty urgent, Princess, so of course I came here right away. Sadly, none of the books I brought with me will be of any help, since they say that only you and your sister could put a new object in the night sky, she responded sheepishly. That is usually true, Twilight Sparkle, but this object seems to be artificial rather than the result of some powerful magic, Princess Luna explained as she walked in from the balcony. Good evening, Princess Luna, but how... How can you tell that it's artificial? Twilight wanted to know while bowing her head to the younger princess. Easy. We extended our medical senses. We were barely able to reach the object, but it seems as if it has no inherent magic at all, which means that it has not been created by magic, nor came into being naturally. The inside seems to be hollow and filled with air. Sadly, we can't tell you much more, Twilight Sparkle, the princess of the night elaborated. After that, the two princesses went on in great lengths what they wanted Twilight to do. At first, she was appalled by the idea of being teleported out of the atmosphere, but her trust in Princess Celestia soon suffocated her doubts with its metaphorical pillow. Her mentor surely wouldn't send her there if it would be dangerous for her in any way. Besides, she was just going to take a quick look around. The two rulers promised her to teleport her back after ten minutes, so she would not have to worry. Just in case she wanted to get before the appointed time, Celestia gave her a necklace. If you are finished with your investigation, or feel that you are in any danger, just say my name and I will hear what you say afterward. Her mentor explained to her calmly. Twilight didn't know why she was supposed to take this necklace with her, if it was supposed to be safe, but she assumed that it was better to be safe than sorry. After a brief goodbye, she refused to sing it as a farewell, the two princesses positioned themselves on either side of her. In a bright flash of golden and silver light, she was transported to the strange object. Twilight materialized in a corridor that was just wide enough for two ponies to stand next to each other. It was only dimly lit and the air smelled wrong somehow. It was way too warm for her liking, and the green light made it hard for her to see. Carefully, Princess Celestia's star pupil took a few steps forward, uncomfortable with the sounds her hoofs made on the metal ground. For about three minutes she continued to walk until she reached a corner, which she turned. There she found several strange devices that lined the walls. In them stood bipedal life forms. Twilight didn't know if they were alive or not, since they stood still as statues. Was this some kind of a mass grave? A feeling of dread overcame her, and she started to shiver despite the heat that surrounded her. Get a grip of yourself, Twilight. The princesses are counting on you, she mumbled to herself, stepping up to one of the creatures. She was afraid of it for some reason. It just didn't seem natural, but the last thing she wanted to do was letting down the princess. Besides, she would be out of here in about five more minutes. Hesitantly, her horn lit up and a stream of magic shot towards the creature to scan it. To her horror, she had made it too strong in her hurry to get this over with, and a part of the metal armor the creature seemed to wear was torn off of its body. Twilight was berating herself inwardly for screwing up in this situation when the creature she had intended to scan came to life and stepped forward. Um, um, I'm, I'm terribly sorry if I woke you up. My name is Twilight Sparkle. What's your name? She stuttered as she backed away from the creature that was advancing on her. It didn't respond and Twilight began to panic. Her ears flattened against her skull as she backed away from it backwards as fast as she could. Then, suddenly she felt something grab her tail and swung her head around. Out of instinct, she reared up with her hind legs and bucked at the creature that had grabbed her. "'Where do you think you're touching?' she shouted indignantly, just now realizing that the creature had fallen over backwards 
and was twitching uncontrollably. There were sparks coming out of the place of its armor that she had struck with her hoofs. Oh, I'm so sorry, she tried to apologize, but then the first creature grabbed at her mane. Only a quick teleportation spell saved her from being caught. A glance over her shoulder made her eyes widen. All the creatures in the corridor that she had investigated were coming to life. What frightened her even more was that they were all coming towards her. Celestia, I, I think I want to get out of here, now! She shouted while attempting to gallop around the corner where she had come from, but she was stopped by something invisible. It felt as if she had run head first into a brick wall, while the air in front of her lit up slightly. Um, Celestia, I think right now would be a really good moment to get me out of here, she said, her voice quivering. Two of the creatures came into grabbing distance, and Twilight tried to defend herself with her magic, but all her horn did was producing a few purple sparks. Oh, this is bad, Twilight thought, trying to knock her attackers to the side to escape, but they stood before her like a wall of flesh and metal. She struggled, doing everything to free herself, but it was no use. Strange limbs grabbed at her and seized all four of her legs, her mane and tail. When she could not move any longer, one of them brought his metal limb close to her neck. Two small pipes shot out of it and buried themselves in her flesh. All the while Twilight was screaming for Princess Celestia or any pony to help her. But no pony ever answered her pleas. Two days later Celestia and Luna stood on the balcony of the throne room once again. Their faces depicted fear and worry. Two days earlier they had sent Twilight Sparkle to the object that had appeared in the sky to investigate its origins. Shortly after, the unicorn had used the magical necklace that Celestia had given her to ask for an extraction, but even with their combined power the princesses had been unable to get her back or even send a reply. Some kind of barrier had come into being shortly after Twilight's call for help that prevented anything to get in or out of the object. Do you think she is okay? Celestia asked, tears flowing from her eyes. I don't know, big sister. All I can tell you is that there is an awful lot of activity up there. Whatever is going on, I think we should prepare ourselves for the worst, Luna replied barely above a whisper. The instant Celestia wanted to reply to that, a light green light started to glow in mid-air next to them. When it receded, the shape of a pony came into view. Celestia immediately recognized the outline of her student and rushed forward to embrace her. Wait! Luna called out to her sister, but it was already too late. Her sister had wrapped her hoofs and wings around the lavender unicorn's neck. Just what happened to you, Twilight? I was so worried! she whispered into her student's ear when she felt twilight raise a hoof. The princess of the sun assumed that it was to return her embrace until she felt something sting her neck that robbed her of all her strength. Celestia collapsed onto her side and looked up at twilight in shock. Just now did she see that there was something wrong with twilight. Her flanks and belly were covered in metal, while one of her eyes seemed to have been replaced with some kind of device that emitted a red ray of light. A grey blast of magic shot towards her student, only to fizzle away on a green barrier that seemed to cover all of Twilight's body. Before Celestia's consciousness faded, she heard Twilight speak in a voice that seemed to be made up of a thousand voices that spoke in unison. We are the Borg. Your technological, biological and medical properties will be added to our own. Prepare to be assimilated. Resistance is futile.